I'm sorry that you want to get yourself off in this way, but um, if you want to have sex and enjoy it with this kind of shape or design that we've laid claim to, you got to give me, you know, a thousand dollars or whatever. Um, so our goal is to try to unlock as much of this sexual technology as possible so that people can freely explore and build uh, for their own sexuality. It's also important, a little bit as I mentioned, for um, uh, just open source in terms of sex toys, it's also important for uh, accessibility reasons. Um, so if you um, have some sort of like difficulty or impairment or something that's preventing you from being able to use a device in a certain way, by us sharing freely and openly exactly how we make, how we design it, how we program all the sex toys, um, that gives you a better idea of how to hack it. Um, so if you need to add an extension, or if you want to build one but things are spread out longer, or they're wider, or they're different, because that's the key thing. Everybody is really diverse in terms of their bodies, in terms of what things they want, what things get them off, what things uh, make them happy, and what things feel like, ugh, no way. Um, and so, if we stick with this industrialized patent model where you end up having one big weird patent covers everything and we're just going to produce, we're the only one who can produce this and everybody's fake cock looks like this. Maybe some people want fake cocks that look like this or this or like this or a whole fist or something like that. Um, so we want to give you guys the freedom, you all the freedom. Um, and so that's an important part. Another part is kind of about material safety. So sex toys are an unregulated industry. There's no FDA that oversees um, weird shaped things that you can put in your butt, um, and <laughs> unless they're for medical use. And so no sex toys build themselves as medical use because then you end up in this kind of FDA headache. So instead, um, they, you can see them often as like novelty purposes, um, or they just build as sex toys. And so there's no oversight uh, in terms of what materials actually go in these. Um, so places can actually say that they're, uh, oh, we only use body safe products, but unless they're publishing things like material safety data sheets, um, like we do, or um, if they're publishing things like exactly how they put it together, you can't actually be sure um, of what's going into this thing that you're about to put into your body. Um, so I feel that's a really important part of open source and sex is about material safety. So when you see ours, you know, you can go through our tutorial, you can look at, oh, they use this type of silicone from this manufacturer, um, it's body safe, blah, blah, blah. Um, here's the safety data sheets on it and all that kind of stuff. Whereas any other dildo you find, you're not gonna get that kind of information. And that, that just kind of sucks. Um, sex is a really intimate thing. It should be intimately customizable and nobody should be able to stop you from getting off how you want. Um, so that's why I think open source software is important. Okay, so now her next question is, what types of things are possible, parentheses mind control, um, with the capabilities of the mod? Uh, she asks, can I fuck a painting if I make the vibrations uh, respond to the pixel values in A Starry Night, for example? Um, totally. <laughs> uh, it all depends on, um, the, world's, the world's really open. So to like address your last question, like, could you fuck a starry night? Um, that depends on, you know, what your interpretation of fucking a starry night is. Um, you could, we have, um, computer vision scripts that already respond to anything you can point a camera at, uh, that control how your dildo vibrates. Um, and so, yes, you could, uh, if your version of fucking a painting is getting the patterns off of how the figures are arranged in a starry night or something like that, um, and controls your vibe, then you're totally fucking a painting. Uh, if you want to, if you want it to be a little different, like, um, maybe you're analyzing different metrics in a starry night, like just the color values. So before you were looking at just the, the shapes and the spatial arrangement, and now you're looking at the colors and that makes it vibrate differently, or you can synthesize all of them. Um, you start getting into this realm of kind of digital expression, which is this cool new burgeoning zone of creative expression, of finding ways that computers can interpret parts of our real world and then making meaning with that. And so you can make meaning out of a starry night and a crazy, you know, new dildo platform 
by figuring out a way to be like, yes, I'm going to fuck Van Gogh's masterpiece. Um, and then you can just create it however you want. Um, other things that are possible, uh, we have lots of demos. So we have things like clothing you can stroke and then it makes it vibrate. Um, we have the computer vision I mentioned. We have capacitive touch sensing. So it turns anything into kind of a theremin. Uh, you can just clip on like an orange or a, um, anything you want. Uh, uh, we have a tennis racket um, and things become touch sensitive. It's like a makey makey, but it controls a dildo. Um, what else? A uh, whole bunch of things. We have this Muse EEG headband uh, that um, is supposed to be able to read your concentration um, and your focus. And so then we can take that metric, uh, which gets sent over Bluetooth, parse it, and then uh, it controls uh, the dildo buzzing and um, based on your own concentration. So you can almost make these games with yourself where you're like, I can only get off if I'm very calm. Um, but then I have this dildo in me that's making me excited. So you get these cool levels of feedback in ways that wouldn't be possible before you have a fun sex toy platform like this. Um, what other things uh, are possible? Let's see. Um, oh, I'm just going to go on to the, the next question real quick. But we have a whole list of lots of different sensors and actuators you can hook up to your sex toy, and it's super fun. You can hook up video game controllers to it. Um, so we're just going to see a lot of, our goal is to get this platform out there and to let people just start playing with it and having fun with it. So, okay, number four, um, they ask, where do I see the sex toy industry headed? Ah, okay. Um, and she asks, what's the fu potential for future innovation? So like I was saying earlier um, in the first question, the way that I see the history of sex toys is the beginning, people making stuff. Uh, out of objects and weird shapes that feels good. So, you know, you put a hole in a watermelon, you put your dick in a watermelon. Um, you make a weird little clay thing that's kind of shaped like a dong and you put it in your butt. Um, so, <laughs> different things like that people have been making for since before history. Um, then this cool new revolution comes. Uh, so this kind of like first wave of sex tech with industrial technology where we can start having these ultra superpowers inside of our uh, dildos and vibrators and cock rings and things like that uh, where we have things like vibrating motors and electromechanical systems so we can get these kind of motions and fun things. Then I see the next um, stage as this new innovations in really good industrial design and taking sex toys out of this like uh, this realm of somewhat skeezy but really just like replication of body parts into kind of taking them in this modern way of being their own thing, their own shapes, and having these beautiful objects of pleasure and art. So then you have this industrial design. Then what you start getting, and this is happening right now, is in interaction design. And that's where the sex toy industry is headed right now. It's about finding cool new ways of interaction design and interacting with you um, and your partner or partners um, or online um, artificially intelligent partners, um, all kinds of different things. Uh, but it's interaction design. Then I see the real potential for future innovation is finding ways for people to share and innovate on their own and building this community so that we're not reliant on a big company issuing out, here is the dildo of 2015. This is what your sex will be like in 2015. Um, and instead, being like, what is the sex I want in 2015 and what are the resources I can get for getting there. So that's my thoughts. Uh, hope you have a good time and hope the class goes well. Thank you very much.